All right, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I want to apologize. We had a computer glitch, and it took us a little extra time to go back and do a little checking to make sure of um, the results, because obviously one of the first and foremost things we want to make sure of is that the results are objectively tallied and we're getting accurate results. So, uh, I'd like to start off with some announcements regarding middle school. I'll give you a little background. Uh, first of all, each middle school exhibit is seen by three judges and scored independently in the areas of creative ability, scientific thought, thoroughness, skill, and clarity. Now, after the scores are combined, the three highest scoring exhibits in each category can be awarded a plaque for first, second, and third place. Now, to qualify for third place, the exhibit score must attain an average of at least 80 out of 100. A second place award is given to an exhibit that scores no less than an average of 85, while a first place exhibit must attain at least a score of 90. That means it's entirely possible that we might not give out a first or second place award if none of the exhibits in that category scores beyond the minimum required. Now, in the event of a tie, each exhibit that qualifies for an award will also receive a plaque. Now, the first place award winner in each category, with one student, also receives a choice of two tickets to an AMC movie theater or a $25 iTunes card. And in the event that multiple students from the same first place exhibit or a tie, all the winners will each get an iTunes card of a lower value depending on the number of exhibits. And it gets even more complicated than that. So, the highest scoring exhibit among all middle school students is given the prestigious Judge Edith Miller Excellence Award and a check for $100. In the event of a tie, that award is split equally among the winners. Now finally, and this is very important because this is something that's brand new this year that we've never done before, the top 10% highest scoring exhibits from 6th, 7th, and 8th grades are eligible to advance as a nominee to the Broadcom Masters National Competition. Therefore, it's possible for an exhibit not to necessarily place first, second, or third within its category, yet still be eligible to advance to the national competition. And we will announce who those eligible folks are as we announce the awards. Now, Broadcom Masters is a program from the Society for Science of the Public, and it stands for Math, Applied Science, Technology and Engineering for Rising Stars. As the premier science and engineering national competition for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, Broadcom Masters inspires middle school students to pursue their personal passion for science, engineering, and math into high school. Now this program brings together young people who share that passion for innovation in subjects and inspires them to stay with math and science throughout their high school career. So we would like to thank Ms. Stephanie Lemnios, who could not be with us here this afternoon, but who was instrumental in introducing Broadcom Masters to the Tri-County Science and Technology Fair. So let's get started. Uh, in, in third place, in the category of biology, from Rhine Neck Middle High School, for how does calcium deficiency affect a bone? And Kita Bacharji. <laughs> In second place in the category of biology from F.E. Bellows for Can humans identify what an object is just by touching it? And if so, does wearing different thicknesses of gloves affect this ability? Let's give a round of applause to Dylan Robinson. Edgemont 
Bernard Junior Senior High School for Are You Sure Your Hands Are Clean? <laughs> Sana Salimi. to chemistry. In third place, from pearls, for which causes oxidation the fastest? Anna Kula Purathasi. <laughs> Our second place award winner in the field of chemistry from Somers Intermediate School for Bubbling Lamps of Lava, Ryan Mahoney, Anthony Miller, Tom Holt. Middle School for Desalination, Sophia Manero. Science, a category I'm sure our MC Joe Rayo was very uh, familiar with. In third place, from John Jay Middle School, aiding in the fight against global warming, the most efficient insulator, let's give a hand for Katie Rita. for asteroid mining, William Hasebis. <laughs> and in first place in Earth Space Science, from Edgemont Junior Senior High School, for di diatom diversity in different bodies of water, Brenda Rao Pukulaju. Next category, which is Engineering Technology. In third place, from F.E. Bellows for How Does Speed Affect Water's Ability to Bend and Carry Light, Gabriel Miller. <laughs> we have a tie for second place. The first second place winner in engineering and technology from Rhineck Middle School for gearing up for engineering, Ryan Moron. <laughs> the second second place winner from Edgemont Junior Senior High School for killing bacteria with different methods, Abby Marks. And 
the first place winner in engineering technology from Y Country Day School for the Dobsonian Telescope, Baron Lagwa. Okay, the next category is Middle School Environment. So we have a tie for third place. The first third place winner from Edgemont Junior Senior High School for five second rules, safer set, Jonah Feldman. And the second third place winner, also from Edgemont Junior Senior High School, for filtration rates of crude oil by clams and mussels, Zachary James. <laughs> Our second place winner in, in middle school environment from F.E. Bellows, for how long does clothing infested with deer ticks need to be tumbled in a clothes dryer to ensure that all the ticks are killed? Let's give applause to Lucy Friedman. And our first place award winner, would be from George Fisher Middle School for the Homopolar Motor, William Myers. <laughs> Let's go to Health Medicine in third place. From John J. Middle School for How Does Music Affect Different Types of People? Sophia D. Cubillis. <laughs> In second place for Health Medicine, from Effie Bellows for Does Watching Television Really Affect Your Brain? Jonah Perovic. <laughs> and our first place award winner, and a winner of either a choice of AMC theater tickets or an iTunes card from George Fisher Middle School, for Adapted Switch Toys, Helena O'Sullivan. Okay, in Math Computers, there's only one award winner, first place, from F.B. E. Bellows for one of the most important factors that affect the fifth grader's willingness to read a book, Naomi Young. <laughs> Storyline. <laughs> All right, let's go on to our final category in middle school, and that's physics. In second place, from Pearls, for a can of coconut produce energy, Faith Lim. <laughs> first place award winner in physics, from Edgemont Junior Senior High School, for the Sun Solution, Matteo Scarcelli. Now 
gentlemen, I'd like to or announce are the Broadcom Masters eligible award winners. Uh, these award winners should see Janice Newman at the end of the uh, award ceremony for instructions on how you can compete um, for the national competition. So the first, and she's in the first row here on the left hand side. So the first uh, uh, exhibit that is eligible to compete in the Broadcom Masters competition from Edgemont Junior Senior High School for Are You Sure Your Hands Are Clean? Santa Salimi in Biology. So the next exhibit that uh, is eligible for Broadcom Masters, uh, also from Edgemont Junior Senior High School for Diatom Diversity in Different Bodies of Water, Brenda Rao Potaraju. Now the final award is the top award among all students in the middle school category, and these are the recipients for the Judge Edith Miller in Excellence Award. I'd like to first introduce the niece of Judge Edith Miller to say a few words about her, and then we will announce the award winners. Teresa? Teresa Henry, please. My name is Teresa Henry, and as I said, Judge Edith Miller was my aunt, my mother's sister. And so, if she were here today, she would be ecstatic. She would be so proud of all the students who participated in this fair. My aunt was very big on education. She was one of my mentors. And she always told us, knowledge, knowledge is power. She went to high school and graduated at 17 years of age and put herself through Hunter College. She became a lawyer, eventually a judge, and then eventually a Supreme Court Justice. But she always, always pushed education. And when I saw her today as a volunteer earlier, I was awestruck. You kids are awesome. You really are. When my aunt told us about education, she put herself through school at a time when it was not popular to encourage, number one, girls to go on and further their education. But even more so, and maybe this is not appropriate, but not for African Americans to go on to a secondary and even higher education. So I am very proud of all the students and the diversity that I see here. And so very happy to be here. So it just so happens we have a tie for the number one overall spot. So the first place winner overall tied from Rye County Day School for the Dobsonian Telescope, Varen Wadwa. And the final award winner, also tied for first place overall, and uh, the recipient of a, uh, a check for uh, the Judge Edith Miller Award from George Fisher Middle School for Adapted Switch Toys, Helena O'Sullivan. <laughs> 